92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, and streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Pleased to be joined this morning by way of telephone with United States Senator Joe Donnelly. Senator Donnelly, good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me with you today. Thank you so much for joining us today because uh, we know there's absolutely nothing going on in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Well, it was interesting. I uh, I got in my car, and a uh, five-minute ride took about half an hour today. So, and I had about seven different police officers who looked me in the eye and said, that way. I'm sure, I, I'm sure that there's no uh, road rerouting happening right now. Well, 15 minutes in, I was further away than when I started. So. <laughs> I was thinking of just, like, parking it at the McDonald's for the day. Well, I'm, I'm curious. Are you going to attend the inauguration? Absolutely. Um, we have over 300 Hoosiers who are coming by the office tomorrow for coffee and for uh, lemonade. And uh, this is this is the office of Indiana, and uh, this is their place. And I want them to come by, see it, and and if they want to get warm for a little bit, and uh, you know, see what see the people who work here. That's great. You use that term Hoosiers. I know. How about that? Huh? <laughs> we can use that officially now, right? Well, it's interesting. The government printing office, for years and years, I guess for forever, has called us Indianans. And somebody said, what do you think of that? And I said, the only people who call us Indianans are people from New Jersey. <laughs> so uh, I contacted him and said, you know, maybe you want to listen to us. Uh, what a unique concept. And um, so they call us Hoosiers from now on. Does anybody know what that word means? <laughs> I thought you did, Barry. You were, you were my source for wisdom on that. Oh, good. <laughs> Senator, let's talk about some important things. Of course, Hoosiers is important, don't get me wrong. But, of course, a lot of noise oh, about the Oh, by the, the way, afford- one of the first things that happened was someone from Purdue said, well, why is it that? <laughs> like, I give up. I surrender. <laughs> Affordable Care Act is making the news right now. It, it is. We have over... 300,000 Hoosiers whose health care comes through the Affordable Care Act, whether it's the exchanges or HIP 2.0, which has been a, a great success and is fully funded by the Affordable Care Act. And so I've said from the start, if you have any good ideas that make health care better, count me in. You want to have health savings accounts? Great. You want to sell across state lines? I'm good on that. But the one thing I'm not going to do is to vote for anything that takes away health care from over 300,000 Hoosiers. So, so for instance, in so many cases, you know, the reason they can't get it has nothing to do with them. They may have diabetes. They didn't cause that diabetes. And if you go to insurance companies, without the exchanges, no one will insure you. And so you are basically playing Russian roulette every day if you have diabetes or cancer or a heart condition. And so this tremendous stride we've made in making sure that everyone can get health care, I want to improve it. I don't want to end it. Senator, one of the things I've seen on uh, social media especially, which, of course, is always an absolute rock-solid, you know, source (laughs) for news, uh, is about this notion of uh, getting prescription drugs from Canada. First, define it for me. Are we talking about mail-order, fly-by-night stuff, or are we actually talking about driving across the border and getting a prescription filled at a pharmacy? And what's your opinion on all this? Well, that's where no specifications were made, Baron. And so, and, and first, and what, what this was caused by was there was an amendment saying um, you can reimport prescription drugs from Canada. And it was attached to the bill that would have ended the Affordable Care Act. And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, to get the prescription drugs from Canada, you lose health care for 300,000 Hoosiers. I wasn't going to support that. Um, The second part of it is it said nothing about making sure that they're safe. And so the no requirement with the FDA, so in effect stuff could come from Bangladesh, from China, could come from untested labs anywhere in the world, and come back into the United States. And our whole system of health care is based on things like the FDA making sure that uh, the pills we have are, are safe. And so I want to make sure that anything that comes into our country is safe. And finally, um, I've been a big supporter 
uh, of making sure that prescription drug prices are fair. I serve on the aging committee. We've already gone after um, a number of pharmaceutical companies, Turing and Valiant, who jacked up their prices dramatically. The EpiPen, if you remember that. Yes, we do. Um, I was part of a report uh, that said if they are going to charge this much for the EpiPen, then we ought to look at importing them from other countries to get the lowest possible price. And so what I'm trying to do is have the lowest possible price for prescriptions while still making sure that they're safe. Senator, one other thing that's been batted around is Medicare, and that's kind of near and dear to some of us. So is anything going to happen with that, or are we going to leave it alone? Well, the president-elect said he's going to leave it alone. Okay. His, his nominee for Secretary of Health and Human Services has made it his career to try to privatize it. And so we're kind of betwixt and between right now on this. And if you privatize it, Tom, what that sets up is a voucher system. So, in effect, if you are sick and you have Medicare, you can be taken care of and is paid for. This would create a voucher system where you'd get a certain amount, and then you'd have to try to figure out what insurance policy to buy, and the insurers would determine whether or not you're covered. And that's never been what Medicare is. You know, I don't want our seniors who might have uh, broken a hip to not be able to get coverage because uh, they don't have the appropriate plan that covers um, hip work. It's, it's a very scary situation. I've announced publicly I am voting against uh, Congressman Price for Secretary of Health and Human Services because he has supported privatization of Medicare and has not walked away from that. Senator, as I understand it, the Speaker of the House, Mr. Ryan, has also not only supported voucherizing Medicare, he actually sets some uh, financial uh, numbers on it when he's he's proposed it. He explains something to me, because I'm a simple man. If I'm giving tax dollars to seniors to go out and buy insurance in the marketplace, how is that different from Obamacare, other than the age of the people I'm giving the money to? Well, the way it's different is that um, they just want to call it by a different name. Um, and, and the Affordable Care Act is has exchanges, and the difference, Baron, is that in the Affordable Care Act, your insurance covers everything, less a deductible, obviously. With a voucher system for Medicare, and this is why I'm going to I'm fighting fighting so hard on this, and I'm against Mr. Price. Um, for our seniors who are listening, it won't be like it is right now, where you're covered and you don't have to worry about it. This is number one. You have to figure out where to go to get your insurance. You have to figure out what policy that you want to have. You have to figure out if your voucher provides you with enough money to get that policy. It may not provide you with enough money for that. So all of a sudden, Medicare, which covers your health care, is now a program that's incredibly bare bones and, uh, and doesn't cover a huge portion of your health needs. And so it's very dangerous. We have a system that works in Medicare, and I'm going to fight for it. Senator, one of our listeners, since we're talking about nominees from the Trump administration that's coming up, but one of our listeners was curious about what you think of the nominee. I think it's Betsy Davis or something for education secretary. Yes, it is. Um, I, I am concerned with her. Look, I've been a supporter of charter schools. Um, I've supported Indiana's um, voucher program up to, a, a you know, they said, look, here's the limits on it. Um, but she doesn't appear to support public schools at all, and that's, that's the cornerstone of who we are. So I support charter schools and, and limited vouchers, um, but the, the cornerstone of any town, of any city, is our public schools. And um, there appears to be actually like an, an active effort um, against them by her. And, uh, you know, I... I don't want to think of Rochester without the Rochester Zebras. I don't want to think of uh, Fulton County without sure. Tippy Valley and without uh, Caston. Um, they not only are the most uh, extraordinary educational institutions, they're the glue that binds us together. And so, um, you know, I want to make sure every kid can have a chance to get an exceptional education. And uh, that's what we're going to try and do. Well, while we're talking about nominees, Senator, we had the nominee for Secretary of State. Now, he caught a lot of flack for a lot of different things, but the thing that concerned me most as a reporter and a citizen is all this talk about the South China Sea. We keep hearing about how ISIS is the worst thing in the world, and, of course, Russia's been in the news, but what I see is 
uh, the American people are going to find out that they're in a conflict with China that they didn't see coming because nobody talks about this, but they're building those islands out there, and apparently they figure they got enough heft to uh, get into a kind of a contest with us. What 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 should I think about where we're going with China, especially under this incoming administration? It's it's a very dangerous situation. And and first, I want to mention, I'm very supportive of General Mattis for Defense Secretary. Okay. I publicly stated I support him. I'm very supportive of John Kelly for Homeland Security. He's a terrific choice. Um, I met with Dr. Ben Carson recently, who uh, who I think at the end of the day will be a fine ho- uh, housing and urban development uh, person. But I'm trying to, and I want to give the president elect. Um, you, you know, you lean toward giving them their choice, and and uh, tie goes to the runner every single time on this. And what I mean by that is, if it's even close, you want to try to confirm these people. But you take a Rex Tillerson, who has, and this isn't the, the only reason not to, but who's never served in any. Um, in any diplomatic post at all, who's never served in working with other governments as part of our government. Baron, the other thing that really concerns me about him is when Russia invaded Crimea, so they invaded a country that was friends of ours, Ukraine. They, they occupied Crimea. They've occupied the eastern part of Ukraine as well, just went in and took another country's territory. Um, and so we imposed sanctions to try to force them to, to feel some pain and to think about reversing themselves. Mr. Tillerson actively worked against his own country's government, the United States, actively worked to try to scuttle the sanctions and to try to make them ineffective. Um, at the same time, ExxonMobil, who he was a CEO of, was working through a subsidiary to get around the sanctions in Iran. And so at the same time that, that we're representing the United States government and trying to make it so that other countries who are our friends can be helped, can be benefited, he actively worked against the interests of his own country. That's really concerning. Senator, I know you've got a busy day, but I did want to ask you as we kind of wrap this up this morning about the final care package, because military mental health has been in the news a lot lately, and it is extremely important. You know, it is it is absolutely critical. We were just able to, uh, I put legislation forward that was included in the most recent defense bill uh, to enable us to have more physicians' assistance to provide mental health care for our service members. The other good part of the legislation that's passed in the past few years is they can go for care right in Rochester or uh, right in Peru or Kokomo or South Bend, have it completely paid for. They don't have to do it as part of the Department of Defense. There's no... Um, there's no stigma at all attached to this. We make sure that uh, people can seek help and not have to worry about not getting their next promotion. And so we've tried to uh, work in every way to make it so that mental health assistance um, is available to our service members. United States Senator Joe Donnelly, our guest this morning on WROI and WROIFM.com. Senator, as always, we appreciate your time. Uh, How long will it take us to make a judgment call on Mr. Trump once he becomes president. Well, I sure hope that from day one he does a great job. Look, I want him to be very, very successful. And so I think we'll know, um, you know, within the first six months how well things are going, that if his focus is on jobs and opportunity, um, growing our economy, keeping our nation safe, I'm with him every single time. Um, if he wants to get in Twitter wars, I'll take a pass. You know? <laughs> Whether it's actually such a thing technically or just practically, are we experiencing the beginnings of an industrial policy in this country? You know, I am very, very, uh, uh, I am very, I feel very positive about some of the things he said in regards to jobs. Where he said, "Look, we're going to fight for American jobs. That's what I've been trying to do. That's what we did exactly. with Chrysler. Right. That's what we did with um, Carrier, standing up for our own." And and uh, you know, hey, I'll be marching right next to him on that policy. Senator, as always, thank you so much, and uh, not too long before baseball season. Amen. You know, I blew out my rotator cuff last year. Oh, no. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, well, eight (laughs) months later, it's better, but I still have a horrible arm. (laughs) Thanks for your time this morning, Senator. We appreciate it so much. much. For anybody in the area, um, just stop by the office if you happen to be in D.C. the next few days. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.
Again, United States Senator Joe Donnelly, and of course we remember him as Congressman Donnelly for a while now, yep. United States Senator. His reelection coming up in 2018, and uh, very nice to visit with him. I thought, I thought uh, very candid in a lot of his yes. comments this morning. Yes, and it's a good example of why you should not get your news from memes, because all week long <laughs> I've seen those memes about those prescription pills, and I thought, wait a minute. Yeah, well, exactly. the people who are posting them up are the people who are going to be angriest about getting rid of the ACA, and it was part of that bill. Exactly. So, which way are you going to go? I don't you know. You can't win with that. Uh, there you there just are, can't win with you, know, I mean, you know, anybody in D.C., I, I don't care, congressman, senator, new president, whatever it happens to be, you got a lot on your plate right now. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you just whether, whether you just take domestic issues, whether you take international issues, whether you take, okay, space issues, whatever it happens to be. I'll never forget. a lot. I'll never forget they asked Ross Perot during one of the debates with him, Bill Clinton, and who I, I think it was Mr. Bush Sr. that was running that year. And he, they said, uh, you know, talked about the president's difficulty. He said, yeah, you wake up in the morning, you think you're going to call up Russia, deal with China, and somebody <laughs> says, hey, Jesus just showed up in Waco. <laughs> so, yeah, you right, got a lot on exactly. your plate, and you never know every day what's going to happen. Exactly right. All right, Barrett, as always, thank you.